Jeremy S. Cook here, and if you've been following along with my projects, you know that I've made several robots called Ground Beasts. These beasts were originally made by creator Teo Johnson as, as wind blockers, but mine takes a little bit different take on things in, in that it uses a remote control as well as, of course, battery and motor power. This is my latest version that I'll be showing off called the Clear Crawler, but of course it wasn't my first try at this. This was my first try out of wood and PVC pipe. Didn't work too well, maybe a little bit too big, a little bit too imprecise. Also tried a couple kits. You can see one walking under wind power here. And of course, I weaponized another one. Another one called the Strand Mouse was a little bit top heavy. And then I scaled it up and put some gears on it as, I guess, a Strand Mouse 2. That one worked really well. I also made a larger beast called the Clear Walker, which worked, looked really beautiful, but never walked quite as well as the Strand Mouse version 2. This one, which I'm calling the Clear Crawler, combines the beautifulness and the clear polycarbonate frame of the Clear Walker with the basic geometry of the Strand Mouse version 2. It, uh, it worked really well, so follow along to see how I built it. Here you can see me modifying the Strand Mouse into the Clear Crawler using a 2D CAD package called Draft Sight. And today, if I made it, I'd probably use, probably use Fusion 360, but 2D CAD is, is pretty nice because you can, if you're gonna put it on a CNC router later, it's all laid out there and you can just divide it up based on your cuts. I cut it out my, on my 2x3 Romax CNC router. First you lay it out on the CAD software and then you go to your CAM software. And here I'm using CAMBAM to lay out the actual cuts and then you use a machine controller. I'm using a computer-based program here called Mach 3. Some people also use a program called GRBL or Gerbil, I guess, for Arduino. I don't, I don't use it, but I, I think it's a pretty good piece of software, or piece of firmware, I guess you'd say. cutting out some of the smaller pieces out of eighth inch polycarbonate. That's where the electronical set as well as the head that I'll put on in a, another video. As it turns out, I didn't cut quite far enough. So I had to do quite a bit of deep brain work first with my Leatherman and then I took it to the, the saw and sawed the stuff off. It just goes to show that you really should use holding tabs on this stuff and just cut through all the way. Other, otherwise, the, the penalty for this is, is having to do quite a bit of work on your saw and then Dremel tool and files and every, everything else. It's, it's quite a pain. From there, it was time to cut out the quarter inch polycarbonate. This would cut out some of the gears and linkages and some of the other structural components. Cutting everything out nicely there. I did make a few mistakes as, as alluded to earlier. In fact, this vacuum system, you can see here in just a second, it actually pulls out the inside of a cut and pulls it down. So cut a lot of it without, without a vacuum on there. Obviously the, the penalty for this is that you get more chips everywhere, but the thing doesn't get sucked into your, into your router and just, just screw things up. Ended up dragging the piece quite a bit. Sometimes you can find your, your center, or your zero point again, but if you can't, then everything's just a little bit, little bit off. That's my machine controller software there working. That was quite a, quite a long process. And there's some more, more cuts going for the side linkages, which you'll see assembled in just a minute. And then got a few gears out of this cut too. These gears, originally I was thinking to cut them out of quarter inch polycarbonate, but some of the, the driving gears are actually cut out of a thicker polycarbonate because just in order so that it won't slip off. Had some problems with this with some earlier beast models. So every one of these has been a bit of a learning experience and it's nice to see it all come together. There's one of the preliminary gears, didn't end up using that, but had to actually use a drill to make sure the hole was, was wide enough for the quarter inch rods that I used to drive everything. There's one that's an eighth of an inch, or sorry, quarter inch. I don't believe I used that either. And then had to clean out some of the legs and stuff too. Even though the main process was automated, this took just a whole lot of work. You know, some deep burning afterwards. Even though I had to be in the shop for this, I could just, I could just cut it. I guess to burr everything while I was, I was waiting. So if there was a problem, I could run over and theoretically solve it or at least keep it from, you know, burning my, burning my house down or whatever. As with each one of these builds, it was definitely a learning process just because 
I hadn't, even though the clear walker was made out of polycarbonate, I didn't personally cut it. So I had to learn how to cut it a little bit better with my router. And of course, there was debris because the way a router cuts, there's always a, a radius on the inside of anything like that. So if you're gonna try to cut, put two things together, you either have to do a technique called an undercut or just get out your, your file and, and file it down later. Now this particular job apparently was done. And if you're ever wondering if your dust collection is doing anything, just, just open up your open up your vacuum and see. Or make it run without the vacuum and just see if there's a difference. But it definitely was doing something, even though there was quite a bit of dust everywhere. More debris on this, of course, is one of the structural components. This, this is the thing that holds the motor in place, that drives everything. And that's that's the top piece that helps hold the electronics in place or shields the electronics a tiny bit. You can see it kind of going together there. The way these work, if you're not familiar with them, is that two, two motors drive sets of four legs each. So it, it drives almost like a tank, like you know, some sort of spider tank. And when I take it to shows and stuff, I always get compared to a spider, like a creepy spider or something. Hopefully they say it's creepy and cool, but you know, you don't ever know. A couple of people got, sometimes people get scared of it too, which, well, that's not much fun. But there I'm doing a little bit of an undercut with that, with my with my Dremel tools. And there's some more work there. Man, you can see, instead of just my router working, I've actually got my got my 3D printer working in the back, and I'm in theory working on something else at the same time. So one of those jobs that I had to do manually that I, I guess I did do well, everything was else was cutting or printing, was to cut some of the linkages, some of the pivot points. Developed some techniques as I was going through this, including cutting several at the same time, but the main thing was using this cutoff bit to cut cut the things in the right right length. The cutoff bit also made a great tool for cutting into it a little bit for retaining rings or eclipses, some people call them. On the other hand, you could do other side you could use a shaft color. So you put the retaining ring on one side, put it in, and then make the shaft color what, what kind of locks it down. You'll see that in a second during the assembly phase. But there I am cutting out several at the same time, just gotta add lots of oil. If you're a pro at this, you probably have better better ways to do it or better techniques, but you know, I'm good enough with the lathe to get it to get by sometimes. Here's another view of me cutting the slots for the for the eclipse. The just using a, a feeler gauge to kind of get a good rough estimate of where I needed to cut into it. Not the most accurate way to do it, but it did it did work well enough for my purposes. And then of course there was some filing that I had to do to get everything nice and smooth on the ends. Probably optional, but made it look a little bit better. And of course there was some manual, manual work on that too. I had to cut out quite a few spacers to keep the legs from hitting each other. As seen earlier, I had to do some manual work on this to get the diameter correct. Here I'm attaching everything together. This is some of the pivots and some uh, some washers that I just used on places that weren't critical and then some thrust bearings where I needed to really lock it down with a, with a shaft collar. Having those thrust bearing there, bearings there meant that I could lock everything down pretty tightly while, while not creating an exorbitant amount of torque. Allowed it to go pretty fast with that 150 RPM motor a little spacer there because it's not a real critical piece and then on the other side I'll be putting putting the bearing on interestingly enough at one point in my career I actually did make actually worked at a company that made this type of bearing so I guess it's entirely possible I had something to do with it but probably unlikely considering I used uh, the cheapest source I could find Once I had a few of the legs assembled, I went back to the structural part of the, the build. One thing I'd kind of forgotten about is, is how I detached the top and bottom electronics pieces to everything. I ended up drilling it with a drilling and tapping it for a 1024 screw. Use button head screws here to make it somewhat, somewhat flush, at least not stick up exorbitantly. There we go. And these were just 
come together, you had the top uh, clearance hole and the bottom are, are tapped. It's a nice little technique. Kind of standardized on 1024s or some, some of my bigger screws, but that could certainly change. Used some hot glue in this initially. Eventually I ended up using, using zip ties to, to hold it down. And there goes the legs on them. Had to make sure I didn't didn't put too many on one side without too many on the other. Otherwise, it would just just topple over it. If you notice me struggling to try to get this on here, some of the spacers are actually too tight on the inner diameter. So instead of taking all of them and trying to fixture them each in, in my vise, I actually made a 3D printed jig to, to keep them all in place without having to do a ton of work for each one. All of them just, just slide in, just like that. Sides have a little little hitch to keep them in place, and then when when you align one, then in theory you can align all of them. So you just take one out, pop it out, and then pop the next one in, just like that. It's always a debate when to make a, a jig, as in, or when to actually just try to align everyone yourself. In this case, I think I, I saved quite a bit of time, and it's always neat to come up with an interesting solution. And I popped them on there for storage. Fit very nicely. The other thing I used a very similar jug for was was to cut to cut holes in a couple of modified shaft collars that would actually affix the gears to the to the driving gear that, that attached to the motors. This didn't work quite as well here because the the shaft collars ended up getting kind of hot and melting the 3D printed piece. It worked okay, but if, if you're going to use this, I, I definitely wouldn't count on using it for more than a few times. Another thing that was a bit of a challenge here was, as I tried to tap this for a 440 screw, my taps ended up breaking quite a bit. Even though I used oil and everything for it, it's just really delicate operation. You see some of the taps just hidden in there. They're not going to come out anytime soon unless I get like a sink or EDM machine or something. And I don't mean electronic dance music for those that are wondering. I did end up getting everything attached and it did, did drive pretty well when I demonstrated it about two weeks ago at a Maker Fair. Some of the driving gears out of thicker material which helped keep everything from slipping off. Yeah, another thing I haven't mentioned yet is how I get the power from the motors to the driving shafts themselves. Use this misalignment coupling which was supposed to be quarter inch to six millimeter but was a little bit off. I mean, considering I paid, you know, a dollar or two from China for it, it wasn't... Yeah, I'm okay with doing some drilling. Then I put it on a heat sink too, in theory. In theory, uh, cool it off faster. Or I could have just waited a little bit longer. With that properly cut, it was time to do some more installation of the linkages. You can see the, the gear turning everything. And once that second second linkage was attached, it walks with the characteristic Jensen leg mechanism gate. Now all that's left to do is hook it up to some motors, and of course attach the the body together. Use some some uh, plastic welding compound, which I don't necessarily recommend because it's supposedly pretty dangerous, but it does do a good job. So use your own judgment here. everything attached together there's the two motors barely fit together I had to be pretty careful about how they how they attached and of course I had to figure out how to put the put the screws in even though I didn't put any sort of access holes I guess I'll remember that for another one if I ever make another one I've said several times that this was my last strong beast but so maybe this one will be but uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> There's the left side's driving shaft going on along with the two two driving driving gears. Plugs in the shaft misalignment color and then everything should in theory drive nicely. We'll see with all the bearings I was pretty pretty hopeful that it would would move smoothly but I didn't really know what this at this point. There you go, gears look nice, and of course you can't forget to, to tighten down the misalignment coupling. 
got to attach it to the motor too but looking looking pretty good at this point it's time to put put power on for a bit for my power supply here we go and that's a small success the cool thing about the power supply is you can adjust the voltage as you wish so you can make it go a lot faster a lot slower very very linear linearly the controller i use in theory has pwm functionality but right now i just hooked it up for on off control and you'll, you'll see more about the electronics in the second video that i'm planning this one's more about the mechanicals and some very simple electronics but it can go one way and then if you reverse the polarity of you know, the plus and minus of course it goes the other way there's the other set of legs i'm assembling you can see the yellow parts are actually 3d printed spacers because everything's not doesn't, doesn't quite line up to uh, the quadrant spacing of the of the polycarbonate it's nice to have that available when you need it since the strand mouse worked pretty well i was pretty sure this would work too but you never really know until you try it the uh, outer gears were actually spaced out a little bit more from the inner gears compared to the strand mouse had some problems with that earlier so that it's definitely a good thing to give it a little bit more clearance from between the gears. You can't just have a meshing, you know, with a zero clearance. There's got to be just a little bit of a little bit of clearance, or so or so it seems from my experiments. Here I'm sh tightening the shaft collars down. Got to get that really tight, and the bearings provide a little bit of friction relief. And stands on its own. That's always a victory when you're making a strong beast of any kind so let's see if it'll walk fasten the electronics down with lever nuts and then turn the power on for my voltage supply backs up nicely and then let's see it go forwards yeah pretty good let's test it on the floor turning up the voltage just little by little fast and then slow fast and then stop again And that'll go ahead and reverse the voltage. Make it come back to me. Turn that up. And it looks nice. Now let's get another view of that from, from the floor. That's actually full speed, so it's a pretty pretty fast little beast. And there's another view of the gears and linkages. Thought this was really beautiful. I just had to had to take some good shots of it. You know, it's easy enough to make a tank-like robot, but I, th I think it's the, the Jensen mechanism that really really sets this kind of thing apart just it's kind of a weird walk not something you see every day not that you see tank robots every day either but i thought it was pretty cool in uh, upcoming videos we'll go over how it's remote controlled and some on the electronics so i hope you check back later to see what what's going on of course you can subscribe uh to me here on youtube or you can give me a thumbs up or leave a comment that's all very much appreciated thanks for watching this is jeremy s cook signing off